Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian. Jared Brandon. Brandon Wong, Pickups. Mike Trombley, Native Audio. What? The boys are back. Yeah. Mike is in the house. Yeah. The band What's is up, back boys? together. He's right. yes. Mike Trombley. <laughs> hey, this is Todd Novak. We are super thrilled that you are with us on our show today. Tar Knobs podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, real quick, Tony Baloney, what yes. do we do on the show? We talk about pizza. Perfect. What else? <laughs> and boutique pedals. And boutique pedals. Amps and guitars. Amps and guitars. Thank you, Mike. You're, you're, you're just feeding me the words. Okay. Professor. We have awesome. good one on ones once in a while, too. Yeah, we do. We do. But uh, we like to talk to the, uh, the smaller builders usually, although we've talked to a couple of larger ones. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it, we, we like to talk, let's forget kind of the background, how, how you got started. Well, you know, what do you see coming up? Yeah, all the things. All Thanks. the things. It, and, okay. and you talk about that. to keep Perfect. up with the times. Yeah, yeah, and mostly we talk about gear. Yep. And sometimes pizza. It's Very all good. Very rarely. Man, it's all good. Uh, speaking of boutique builders uh, of fame and fortune, <laughs> uh, or at least repeat offenders on the show, who's on the line right now? Zach Broyles from Mythos Pedals. All right. Zach. Mythos. Making a, making a three-peat. I'm Mjolnir. back. Mjolnir. I like it. <laughs> Me all near. <laughs> yes. Uh, so just a little setup for the show, everybody. Zach and I had a phone conversation uh, a couple weeks ago, and he had an idea where he wanted to send us uh, dueling um, golden fleece pedals. One was surface mount, mm -hmm. and one was through hole. Mm -hmm. And they we the the only rule was like don't cheat and peek and see which one is which but they were designated by a different knob color as we started to talk a little bit more uh we thought about doing the uh, a show based on like what's going on in in the pedal world right now um what are some things that zach as a pedal builder and mike as a pedal pedal builder are encounter are encountering from you know just how they're building pedals what the requests that they're getting things that they're seeing trends what are the p actual pedal builders talking about with each other um are they talking are they talking yes they're talking for sure uh <laughs> so i that was a really interesting thing so we was like yeah let's do a show about that and just sort of let the rest of us in on maybe the deeper pedal world uh, lots of questions to be had so we'll be asking lots of nice questions and this one may go a little long. It may have to break it in two. Maybe not. We'll see. We'll see. So, oh. are, so are we going to start talking about the golden fleece? Nope. Fleeces? We're going to cover a couple things real quick. Dang it. Um, we got a couple of announcements real quick. We're going to give a big fat shout out to Rode, Rode Microphones for providing our Rodecaster Pro uh, recording unit, which is fascinating and awesome and amazing and we love it and we are so grateful to them for supplying that as well as our Procaster mics uh, which are still treating us extremely well articulating arms and everything i love the articulating arms yes really sir. nice I can, so yeah. massive thanks to road for their support check them out at road mics they're out of australia they Neat. are uh, and that's really, that's it. That's the announcements. We, we just got too much to talk about today. Um, we're going to do a real quick what's going on in our music world this week. Uh, let's start with Mike. All right. So uh, I brought in here, this is the Ibanez SB7. It's a synthesizer bass, but I run it with my guitar. Um, a guy in my hometown actually gave this to me and was wanting me to kind of do something similar to this or take the concept of this and do it. It has a uh, Ottawa synth one, synth two, and it has a decay slow and fast, but it's your typical like uh, envelope filter settings. And uh, to be honest, the synth one and synth two, I don't know the, I don't know, they don't really jive with me, but the uh, Ottawa on it sounds pretty killer. And it, um, the controls that it comes with um, are pretty nice to dial something in sweet. So I've been rocking that for the past couple of weeks, playing around with that. Nice. Yeah. I wish there was a pedal company that only made Ottawa's that were located in Ottawa. <laughs> Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be uh, uh, Tony, what's going on? 
Um, uh, lots of stuff's going on. Uh, I, I did some postings on Instagram of some Vox things. I, I had a gentleman, this guy, I, 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 uh, God bless him. He's got more old Voxes and things that I, than I've ever seen. And, uh, he sent a bunch of bodies up because that's really the only way to make them. Uh, because they're, the guards just shrink. Interesting. This one was like, bubbled and shrunk and stinky and all that stuff but you're, and specifically you're talking about the vox guitars vox uh yeah like the phantom guitars yeah, the, phantom or, uh, the teardrops aren't so bad but i did find something rather interesting so mm-hmm. at the shop we usually have a uh, a spotify kind of you know artist of the day series yeah that's cool and um so i i i've always liked the song el paso by marty robbins down in the West Texas town, town of El Paso. So that's the song. <laughs> Only it's much better when Marty sings yeah. it. But anyhow, as it was going through, this one song pops up that uh, I eventually did a little research on. And it's, a, it, it's, it, it's like this distorted guitar sound coming through. Now, on, this is on a song that was recorded in like 1960 and came out in 1961. It's called Don't Worry. And uh, so I dug through a little bit on on uh, yeah Wikipedia and, and some other sources, and uh, the guitar player, the session guy, was Grady Martin, who a lot of people might know because he was a famous guy back in the fifties and sixties. Of course, a guy you know that grew up back then is called Grady Martin. Grady Martin, but uh, who also played a Bigsby <laughs> guitar, a double neck Bigsby guitar. But um, apparently, there was a bad channel on the mixing board. And so he was doing this thing on a, on a tic-tac bass, um, a six string bass. And, uh, it just, it's, it sounds like the, the guitar tone in, in satisfaction really? only what, four years earlier, five years earlier. Oh. And, uh, so it's, it, it, and, and Grady Martin apparently wanted him to scrap it, but the producer of the record wanted to keep it in. So it's like, it's one of the earliest recordings of a distorted guitar signal, uh, so that's Marty Robbins. Don't worry. Oh, check that yeah, out. Check it out. Fascinating. Zach, how about yourself? Well, uh, we just moved to a new house and <clears throat> been trying desperately to get everything set up because I haven't turned the, the websites off, so I've been getting lots of orders. Uh, but what I'm trying to do right now is, is set up a video room because I want to dive in and do more YouTube stuff, pedal demos and things like that. And so that's kind of been my focus for the past uh week or so i finally got my shop in order and and trying to get nam ready too but uh that's i, I really want to do more youtube stuff because i feel like i'm i'm fairly good at it and so good. that's been consuming me lately trying to get prepped for that awesome awesome jared so all of us in this room uh were at the last guitar show in columbus mm-hmm. mm. and we it was a good show and we always love to go to the guitar shows and whatnot. And uh, the table next to me was a nice gentleman named Terry that I've known for a while. And he was helping this uh, lady who's had all this gear that her husband had left behind. And <clears throat> he passed away. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, Wait, I didn't know how to sound fast. That. Like, <laughs> you know, how do you Alice. say this? <laughs> How do you say that without being bummed, right? He, so anyway, he she's, away. <laughs> she's got, well, yeah, it was two years yeah. ago, so it's, you know, it's yes. not fresh anymore. But uh, sh- she was left, I think, about four half stacks, four amps, uh, gobs of gear. Marshall uh, half stacks, to be precise. Yeah, vintage. Vintage so Marshall half stack. She had a JCM 45 from the early 70s, which I really wanted. But I already have that amp. It was a 71, I believe. So Yeah. And then she had, she still has it. And then she had uh, two JMP. And they were, I think, 78 and 79. 77s, both of them. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> How do I know this? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I'll take it. That is it, that is actual factual right there. They're both 77s. Good. So anyway, <laughs> I mowed on it for about... An hour or so. No, he didn't. No, he couldn't get the minutes. he couldn't get the hundreds out of his wallet fast enough. I was like, "Hey, what's that over there?" And he's like, "Oh." <laughs> and actually, no, I did mow over for a little bit. Eh, not much. Well, you started. So though. I bought you bought one. one. I bought one, 
And but then, wait. <laughs> he did it. A few hours <laughs> later, when no one else was buying that second one, I got antsy. No, and it, I'm like, I got to get it. It was like 15 minutes after you bought the first one. No, it was not. <laughs> I think it was 15 minutes. It was absolutely <laughs> not. It was much longer you, you, than that. You, you sound tested both of them. You did an AB, and then you bought yeah. the one, and then the next thing I know, you, you're you're wrapping up the other one there it, it was fast well it's possible he couldn't remember which one was a and i'm which trying one was to tell B, the story so of how it actually went <laughs> these two want to embellish it for everybody's entertainment <laughs> no it's it sounds yes. like the truth in it's fact actually, it's true <laughs> anyways please go on was with it? your in uh, story honestly, in humor you find the truth <laughs> <laughs> okay. i honestly don't remember yeah but i'm glad I you were very them. giddy i was giddy for you uh, like proxy Did. giddy I mean, they still have the original vinyl covers. That's yeah. a nice. Um, and these were nice tours. Place. These were these have been you know. Yeah, the played. one I think the one is a little more beat up than the other because I think it was his favorite one. But, but uh, yeah, but they're not like all the Tolex is like clean. I mean, they're mm-hmm. they were ha- taken very well care. Of. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And they both had the original tubes as well. Wow. One has Sylvania, and the other one has. Um, uh, not RCA, but the other really old. Mm. I don't remember. No, well, the other ones. Radio Shack. Sure. Uh, Tongue Soul. Yeah, maybe those. I don't know. We'll go with that. They were really but seventy-one. I'll look. I'll Whatever take a picture takes. of it again. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted that um, JCM forty-five. I still might get it, but <laughs> God. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I got to it's uh, you know clean. It, it's, it's clean, clean but it's 100 watts and like Well, so are the J- no, not JMPs. A JC, not a, no. You know, it's JCM 40. 45 is not 100 watts. Actually, that was a super lead. Oh, you had a super lead. Okay. Yeah, that's so, a super lead. Okay. That is 100, isn't it? Yeah, yes. I think yeah. it is. Yeah, cuz that when they click that on everybody put their hands in their ears. Yeah. It, I didn't like the sound of that. I got to be honest. I got it the JMPs really cuz they're a lot more useful. What was the sound of it? harsh was it it yeah. was loud it was, it was just like harsh but you oh, can just harsh like too loud or trebly or what are you talking I, about i'm just let me go with harsh why okay. you, why I, you, I don't know I that one was know. more that's more <laughs> collectible it actually it's worth worth well more. but it's been modded too that was the other thing uh, it looks uh, like it was modded but it, it was not it was they put a master volume on it if there's a master that, volume it's was it's that the mod i wasn't even there buying it i this is so I thought that clearly, I I clearly thought that was Jared was not at the guitar show. <laughs> yeah, visions of visions of Marshalls dancing in your was head. It? I don't know. If yeah, it was now right. you have to buy a couple of eight ten cabinets. It was well, you almost got those too, but they were uh, no, no. But the actual eight, the, the original. Oh, the eight tens. Yeah, no. The he almost got the he almost got the cabinets, but those were eighty uh, ones. Uh, so he did not. Yeah, it's, they, she has one more cabinet that came with those amps mm. and i might get buy that from her if she finds the black backs to okay. those speakers that's astounding. If those go with those jam your wife doesn't listen to the podcast does she <laughs> no no okay <laughs> you're safe uh all right for me <laughs> or equipment uh, i've been talking with john sanchez over at warehouse guitar speakers what's and- going on in your music world this week todd well, <laughs> I was talking with John Sanchez over at Warehouse Guitar Speakers, and he wanted to. So we're going to have him on the show. We've got a really cool episode coming up. I'm very excited about this. Oh, cool. Um, we're going to basically go over. Um, so if you have a well-known a consumer-based amp, right, like a, like a 65 reissue um, uh, reverb, blackface, well, I'm looking. I'm looking at your shirt, and it's throwing me off. You know, uh, or or just a, an AC15 or an AC30, like one of the newer ones that you can go and yeah. get just about anywhere, right? Right. What do you What do you do when you want to replace speakers in those? Like, what should huh. you be looking for? Uh, and and basically tonally, what can you help? with replacement what mm. what can be helped with replacement right. figures so we're going to go through all that it's gonna be fantastic one of the things that he wanted to do uh so they also supply all the all pedal stuff and he they created a new line of pedals which are diy pedals but they're in their kits but they're made for and i did a post on this uh on instagram they're made for people who are not mike or zach but still want to build and <laughs> you know some of these littler parts you can end up ru- like ruining your pedal if you do it wrong uh especially with the like the heat of the of the iron and stuff so mm. 
what they've done is they've basically put in all of the all of the little tiny parts and um, more um, fragile parts, but still there's lots of through hole parts that you can use so that you can put, you know, you can get better at soldering. Uh, so you so can it's not just pedal, like throwing the board in a box and right. The you're not, it, um, you're not just going like, I hope I can figure this out because a lot of the, a lot of the pedal kits, uh, the, the instructions are, man, they're rough. So step uh, DIY pedal people step up the instruction game, please. Um, and, I think for someone maybe who is just starting out, these instructions, it sounds weird, but these instructions are really, really fantastic because it also shows you how to do subtle mods to the thing that you're doing and to, to have a little bit more control over it and tips on soldering. And it's really great. So he sent us two, uh, they're called Slammerai, the Bush, Bushido Drive. Uh, so they're just cool overdrive pedals and we're going to build one and sort of document the build. And we're going to give a kit away. Oh, Ooh, unbuilt. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So that's really fun. And uh, so that's what I've been. That was I, that's what I got this week. Well, that's a, that's a good week. Ding, 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 dong. All Anytime right. you can give something away. That's yeah, a good man. week. <laughs> I like it. Uh, all right. Woo -wee, we got a lot to talk about, everybody. Uh, Zach. Zach, 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 you started yes. this whole thing out, and fortunately, we were able to get Mikey. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, fortunately, we were able to get Mike down here as well. He's a very busy cat, but he made time for us, and so I'm really interested to see the, 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 the back and forth, the tit for tat, if you will, between the two um, pedal monsters here. <laughs> we have the number one question, and we started it all. Everybody, the surface mount versus through hole debate. Now, I said, is is the like is the debate a, really a, a that big of a thing? I mean, I hear a little bit about it, but I'm not the one who's building the pedals and getting asked this all the time. So, gentlemen, I turn the topic over to you, Zach. Would you please start us off? Sure. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so the surface mount thing. It, 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 it may be more part of the, the gear page, you know, all, all the people that know more than you in the gear page sort of, sort of thing that where, where all the debate mainly happens. But um, I think it was around a year ago or maybe two years ago, there was a YouTuber that had a JHS pedal and it was one of the, the at the Andy Timmons pedal and did a review of it, took the back off and mentioned that, it had all these surface mount components and was kind of given JHS a hard time over the fact that it cost 200 or whatever dollars that it cost. And it had these cheap little components in there and that kind of sparked the fire and JHS Josh does a great YouTube vlog where he tried to dispel a lot of those, those myths and rumors that surface mount sound is good. They don't you know function the same or whatever. And I just think, you know, for me personally, I, I'm getting to a point building these pedals that I can't do the through hole thing myself anymore. Uh, it's exhausting and I need to simplify it. And that's why I looked at, at surface mount. But I think if you ask people who are purists in the pedal community, they may, they kind of turn their nose up at, at, at surface mount and don't really give it the time of day. So and that, I mean, that, Mike, you can chime in. I just, that's kind of my experience in it. Yeah. Well, should we, should, before we discuss it, should we, so all our listeners know what, exactly it. what yeah. we're talking about? Yes. Good point, Tony. And some of the participants sure. in the podcast too. <laughs> yes. Like, Who would like, that be? I don't care. <laughs> Mike, you go ahead and, and give them the explain. Okay. So, uh, so let's start with through hole. So through hole components, you know, they can consist of, uh, your capacitors, your resistors, they're similar to something you would see if you cracked open your guitar and, you know, kind of larger size components. Um, they've been used since, I mean, the dawn of components. Um, then later on, as uh, manufacturing got a lot better. Uh, well, they ended I, up, I'm going to actually jump in there. Yeah. When we're talking about the through-hole components, yeah. the reason that they're called through-hole is that on the board... 
Tell yeah, they have. So the reason they're called through holes is because they're a lot larger and they actually have uh, what they call leads, which is like, you know, two sides that, you know, if you're assembling, you would solder to those. So a side, a piece of wire on one side, a piece of wire on the other. Pretty much. Those go through the two holes that are designated on the actual circuit board. Yeah. And then they're soldered from the back side. Yep. And uh, so larger components, but as uh, manufacturing got a lot better throughout the years, uh, components started getting smaller. And uh, one of the things that came out of that was smaller components, which are surface mount devices. And these can range, I mean, millimeters, millimeters small. Yeah. The ones Uh, that I just showed everybody in the room, the the Bushido ones, I mean, those are micro they're really 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 tiny yeah exactly so these you know surface mount are now used in a lot a lot of uh newer electronics you know your cell phones laptops right all that um so uh but these components look a lot smaller they don't have the long leads or you know uh conductor uh leads they often yeah. look like almost like like Lego type of things is it just in the sense of yeah little boxes they're little boxes and they have multiple mounts so you have to like actually attach them it isn't just you're not just threading something through you're actually plugging it in yeah and so the reason why they're called surface mount is because the way you make the connection is you don't uh, you know with the through hole you would feed that through the circuit board and solder, solder it on, on the, the other side, side on the yeah. back side but whereas these you can laid on the circuit board and it has a pad that you would uh, put the solder and that's how it makes a connection on the surface. And part of the reason that that can be problematic for maybe less experienced builders, I know that you hunch over a desk and you actually put (laughs) like those things on and like that's kind of nuts. I've seen you, you know, (laughs) do that. And for those builders that are maybe not as gifted, you can start to run into some major problems. You can ruin an entire pedal. If yeah, you, you know, it, right? the pads are a lot smaller. So, you know, you can't hang out too long with your uh, soldering iron on those pads. Um, you know, a lot smaller. So you're dealing with, you know, smaller components. And so that can be kind of time consuming, you know, if you're not used to you know, handling those. Right. So uh, from uh, opening up back, opening it up back to Zach and uh, Tony, uh, what are, <laughs> what is, or, or, or Mike, <laughs> or whoever's in the room, yeah. or Jared. Uh, well, uh, so w- what are the advantages aside from size? All right. If, if size wasn't an issue, wait for it. Um, <laughs> then w- just, is there a real advantage or disadvantage if you have the exact same component that is a surface mount uh, and, and the exact same component, I mean like the value or the, the, the purpose of it, is there an advantage to that being surface mount versus through hole? Um, I mean, scientifically they're, well, the the same, same makeup. Um, and each one, you know, each device has a tolerance of its own. And that's kind of where, uh, a lot of through, you know, older through hole components, they have uh, a wider range of tolerance. And what the tolerance is, is you have, say a component is supposed to be a specific value. Well, if it has a larger tolerance, it might not be that value that it says. Um, it could be a lot, it could be a lot higher or a lot lower than what it's rated. Um, and so that's so kind that's, of, that would translate into like give or take a few on either side. Exactly. So that's why a lot of older style pedals that, you know, implement, um, older components that have higher tolerances, uh, you know, you might play one, you might play one, um, fuzz pedal and then also not, you play another one, which is made by the same company, same exact effect, yeah. but it sounds a lot different. So. Uh, Zach, I'm going to have you jump in real quick, but I'm going to give an analogy in case anybody, this is floating over anybody's head. If you get into a car, particularly an older car, and you start to turn the steering wheel, uh, if it's a real low tolerance, you're going to have a very responsive steering wheel. If you have a very high tolerance, that's when you get that play where you're like, I'm moving my hands, but I'm still going straight. Yeah. But here's the thing though, is right. um, these surface mount components, they too also have their own tolerances and um, you can actually buy through hole components that have um, tolerances, like pretty fine tolerances. Um, so they wouldn't have that wide of a range. 
And it's almost to the point where they match, they can, these through hole can match the same tolerance as like a SMD. So at that point, you're almost, you know, apples to apples, you know, comparing. Interesting. Yeah. Zach. Yeah. Uh, you know, on, on paper, and here's the thing, and this is the thing that a lot of people try to express is, you know, on a schematic, electronically, it's going to do the same job. But we're, uh, while we do play and experience sound with our ears, there is something to be said about taking the back off a pedal and seeing a big component in there, seeing a big transistor. It's got mojo, it's got a vibe, and it's got a psychological effect that I think a lot of us kind of fall victim to. But, you know, <clears throat> one of the more advantageous reasons to use surface mount is you can have a fabrication house make them for you, which they'll have what's called a pick and place machine where it has a little arm and it goes around and picks up the parts and puts it on the board. That way a human doesn't have to do it. So your cost, you know, it's more cost effective. And since the parts are so small, you can do more complex things in a smaller space. So mm -hmm. it kind of gives you a little bit more of a, a you know, a creative uh, playground. So you can throw more things on a pedal and do more stuff without the limitations of having to worry about all these larger through hole components that, you know, are more than double the size of the vast majority of pedals that use surface mount. Yeah. There's a, it's interesting. I, well, uh, the, the broadside underdrive that I got from Hello Sailor Effects when I cracked that open, I swear there was a hot dog in there. <laughs> like <laughs> there's, there's, old, there's, a, there's this old component that's just like, I was like, wow, that's the biggest component I've ever seen in a pedal. It was, it was it's pretty neat. It's probably an old military spec resistor. It very well could be. Um, I think one yeah. of the things that you're touching on though is there's also when you see something that is made by robots, then is it, d does it, does it detract from the idea that like Zach made this or that Mikey made this or, you know, anybody else made this because now you're introducing, well, right. Did they, uh, how much did they, did they design it and then say, all right, robots do your thing. My fingerprint is no longer on this. Right. And when you're paying a lot of money for a pedal, that, that you subscribe to that brand and you have an affinity for the pedal and the pedal builder and the kind of music that it's associated with, you, that is why we buy the gear that we do is because we want that actual connection. We talk about this all the time on the show, the, the, the connection between the, the builder and, and the one who purchases it and why we do these things. Yeah. It's, it's almost the reason right. that there is a boutique explosion up against like boss or Ibanez or something like that. Right. And, and you know, I think part of it, cause that's a very valid point. And that, I think that's a, a thing that a lot of people argue online is like, if a robot made it, how did, you know, how, how did Zach, claim to make it. But one thing that's so crucial about anything uh, is the design of something. Yes. And Absolutely. just speaking from my own experience um, with the Mjolnir, um, I've redesigned that multiple times. And every time, I, I mean, I've done a whole new circuit board, it sounds different. So the, that is, is such a big part of it. And I think what I've learned in, in doing this over the past you know, number of years is that there's a lot of artistry in doing the circuit board. And I think a lot of people don't understand that and then they don't, they don't get it. And they think if a robot did it, that it was done completely in a computer where you click the button and it's done for you. But every single thing that I've done, I hand lay out, I draw the traces, I make the circuit board like I was doing it on paper, just in a computer, but I made it. And I think that's a big part of it that people need to understand and, and kind of comprehend. Cause I totally get their point too. I, I just a, as a as a kind of a novice here um are the are the surface mount ones uh the circuitry is it more efficient is there i mean obviously it's you know it it can be um maybe a faster assembly yeah like a production difference but but in terms of the the, mm -hmm. the you know the efficiency of the circuit itself is there is there any difference between the two I'd say they're incredibly more reliable. Uh, a lot of them can can hire uh, that can operate at higher voltages. I, and, and just like Mike was saying, there's you know the permutations of every single component. There's there's almost an infinite number of different 
styles for, you know, you say you have a hundred K resistor, you know, there may be a hundred versions of that with different tolerances and voltage ratings and, and, you know, wattages and things like that. So, but, you know, really the, they, they operate the same, yeah. if not more efficiently. So, you know, and I think Zach, I think you were getting at it is, um, you know, you have these components and I mean, they're all, you know, they have different values, different, you know, they do different things, but it really comes down to how you implement that design and how you're reaching the consumer. Right. right? Um, oh, mean, yeah, yeah. And you can see that in, you know, the overdrive uh, distortion fuzz world is there's so many different, uh, you know, different types of designs and uh, different flavors and, um, you know, and what really attracts the consumer is uh, how that sound or how that design kind of resonates with them. And so th I think right. that's where you start kind of getting that separation is, I mean, one thing is, is you know, through hole or SMD, but it's really kind of how does that design um, connect with the user? Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, does, but does the user even notice? Well, that's the thing too, is there's so many, I mean, you have some people that actually care about that. Really? You have some people who don't. Yeah. Um, what I call right. that, that's why that, I sent you guys the two pedals. Yeah. And I think, I think this can kind of relate to with you, Jared, right? With, with old, pickup stuff, with the old yeah. pickup stuff and new pickup stuff. Yeah, generally, yeah. in my opinion, people see and well, and let me rephrase that people hear with their eyes. They I see with their eyes too. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> when people, well, when people <laughs> open up a pedal or, you know, they look at a pickup and they look at the color of the wire. Yeah then that can turn them off to that pickup because yeah, they exactly. think it's going to sound way different. Well, the, I mean, it's the same thing in your world is, uh, you know, somebody has, you know, a copper wire from, you know, the sixties. Yeah. And then how much different is that than a copper wire in the two thousands? I mean, you, you deal with probably the same thing, right? Yeah. It's, it, same, it's, it's, it's the same, same thing because yeah. it does, it does the same thing. Yeah. It, it operates yeah. the same way as long as the same diameter and the outer you know, insulation is fairly yeah. the same. Thing. But I yes. think it, I think it boils down to how does that pickup sound? Yeah. And also, it, you know, in the pickup world, how does that pickup look? You know, that's, right. that, that plays another part into it too. Yeah. And Fearing I think we get into eyes. the same argument over like high voltage paper and oil caps in yeah. a guitar tone yep. circuit oh, yeah. on, on paper. It doesn't make any difference, yeah. but people, right. myself included, I, I can, I, I perceive a, a difference, even though it, okay. it's a passive circuit. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have it's to do me. the Pepsi Coke test. <laughs> I like yeah. it. Uh, this is not there unlike some of the discussions I've gotten with the actual guitar builders where there are some people who are taking an immense amount of pride in doing everything by hand. Yeah. And, and then they have an end product. And then they can take issue with someone who's doing everything in CNC. And they have an end product. That end product for the consumer doesn't matter. How much does it matter? And I'm certainly not going to take sides on that. <laughs> I'm not getting anywhere near that. Mr. <laughs> Switzerland. Yes. Yes. Uh, you, you guys uh, discuss that amongst yourselves. Uh, so um, that's, that's my best Swiss I could conjure in a moment's notice. Uh, I'm not taking very, the same position good. Todd is on that. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. I'm gonna. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll 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 state my opinion. Hearing with eyes. Yeah. I'll, I'll let people do. hear with eyes all they want. Well, yeah, that's yeah. Fine. That actually gets into a really interesting. Let Let's uh, shift off of this topic. Okay. Um, and let's hit another one. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna move ahead because we actually have a segue that I may be in danger of running out. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> uh, nice. Which is. How much does hype play in the value and or desirability of a pedal? Mm. Or a guitar or an amp. Well, so let's stick to pedal tonight. All right. All right. Whatever you want to do, Tom. Oh, yeah, we never talk so about it. So this was another thing that uh, Zach, that Zach <laughs> and I were talking about um, on the phone. Uh, I mean, that was dang near a whole episode that we had on the phone. <laughs> Why didn't um, you record it? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was great. Yeah, we, we talked for like 45 minutes. It, it was, You could have just dubbed us in, you know? We could, yes. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe I should start doing that. Uh, <laughs> it would be easier. Um, 
So we talked about a couple pedals that are, we will not, absolutely will not get anywhere close to naming that we have seen skyrocket in demand or in value or in, you know, just sort of hype or, and, and we talked about like, what is the reason for that? Why did that happen? Is it warranted? Um, are, uh, you know, so I'm curious to know from a builder's standpoint, okay, first, and then we'll get into all the other clowns in the room. <laughs> from a builder's standpoint, where do you both kind of sit on, you know, the, the hype machine for pedal sales? Uh, let's start with Zach again. Well, um, <clears throat> you know, for me, I... Uh, I would be really excited if something like that happened. If, if, if a pedal I made and it's kind of happened a few times, but not to the extreme of, of these, these other pedals that, you know, will not be named, but I mean, it's, it's all about getting into the zeitgeist, getting into the conversation. It, it, when people think pedals, they want to think of you. And like, I want, that to be part of my thing too. And, and it's kind of happened lately with the high road fuzz. I don't know if you guys have seen that on my Instagram, but the, sometimes here's the thing. It happens, uh, you know, all the time when you see stuff that gets hyped and then skyrockets on eBay on reverb and whatnot, th those things to me are a little unwarranted because if you can still buy something new and, and it's a hundred, two hundred dollars cheaper. I just don't think that that's reasonable. And if, if that happened to one of my pedals, I would kind of tell everybody to pump the brakes. I'd be excited for the sales directly, but on the used market, if stuff was selling for bananas money, I would, I would try to squash that. And like Todd said, how much does hype play into the value and desirability of the pedal? I think it plays a huge part, and I, I think you can uh, vouch for this, Zach, is uh, hype is just another market strategy, right? Oh, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, and so I think it plays a huge part, and, uh, you know, as if someone's able to hype up a pedal, I mean, big enough, um, <laughs> in a way, you could almost make it sound better, I, if that makes any sense. Totally. Yeah. And, um, cause I, I don't know how many, you know, and this is even before I even got into the whole, uh, thing of playing pedals is, uh, I had friends come up to me saying, Hey man, you got to try this new pedal, uh, blah, 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 X, Y, Z, you know, guitar player plays this thing. And so does blah, blah, blah. And you got to try this thing. This thing sounds like crap, but the fact that somebody else plays it or maybe that it's hyped up, I'm like, it, yeah. it can kind of play a part. And you make a good point because, I mean, before, you know, recently, I guess, you know, people would try to get a pedal or a guitar or an amp or something that, uh, that their favorite player, yep. you know, presumably played a lot of yeah. times they just put their name on things, but yeah, it, it, but now it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because now it seems like it doesn't matter who's playing it. It's if, if certain names get thrown around in yeah. terms of the pedals or you know, things like that, it, you know, it, it has its own little life of its own. I think when we're talking about the hype game, there is a, something to be considered, which is when you have a builder that has created a couple of like, really great pedals and have, and has built, you know, uh, uh, an array of great effects and, and, or they are collectible for certain reasons, whether they're hand painted or whether they're unique knobs or designs or whatever it is. Then when they do the next one, it just, it's, it's the hype is predicated on the previous pedal. So anybody who like, like me, if, if, um, if I like a specific pedal um, that because of a certain reason and that builder comes out with a new one, I'm much more apt to get really excited about that and get it sight unseen or, or sound unheard yeah. uh, simply right. because I know right. what that builder is about. I know what their, what their build standard is. I'm excited to get it because I've, I'm already invested in that brand. And when you get into another situation, which is like, whoa, where'd this pedal come from out of nowhere? But like, 
all I'm seeing on Instagram is this pedal everywhere or, uh, or demos of this pedal. And you're just like, wow, that that's cool. But like, what's the hype all about? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, I think so. I think that, that, that's a, it's like that with, with almost anything though. Uh, you know, I guess I, I'd assume, but, but yeah, at Instagram has changed everything, especially, f- I mean, for us, you know, I think that it's given people the ability to trend and that has totally shaped how people have, it's it shaped all their purchasing decisions, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So hype, uh, good or bad is obviously something we all have to deal with. And, um, you know, I think if you, if there is a lot of hype around something, it's probably worth, <laughs> it's, it it's probably worth checking out, but, yeah. uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to su- totally subscribe to it, make your own decision and, yeah. and, and uh challenge those things you know i think that's what a lot of what we were doing it was like we we're sort of like it was it was a little bit of rock paper scissors like all right i'm gonna say this one you know <laughs> am, yeah. I, am i gonna yeah. show my hand here right. and uh and we we agreed on on quite a few that we we're like really it was, yeah. it was a very interesting conversation and i'm glad that we are not yeah <laughs> showing our hands right now anyways <laughs> You do. You go and do this with your own friends. Have your own debates about this. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get out of this one. Okay, so here's another great one. Digital versus analog. Oh, my gosh. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. So, Zach, this was a big one. We'll just keep it with the onesie twosie here. Go ahead. Start us off. Well, yeah, so <clears throat> I, I'm working on a delay. Uh, I think I'm ready to enter that uh, arena. And the first thing I get asked whenever I was making mention of it online is that, is it going to be analog? And then when I poll people and say, hey, you know, what would you want it to do? And they're, they're telling me I want it to tap and subdivide and then do all this stuff. And I'm like, you realize that making something analog uh, to do that is very complicated and very expensive. So there is a... I think there's a trend now that obviously we see everywhere with Strymon and even Tide and Source Audio and so many people that the digital is becoming okay and normal. But when it comes to boutique pedals, a lot of people still think analog is better or analog is the only way. And they don't understand all the shortcomings, limitations and the costs that go along with doing something in an analog way. Mm, and we'll touch on that yeah. uh, in a couple of questions here. Um, as for me, uh, I'm, I don't know, just play what sounds good. (laughs) Um, that's kind of my philosophy. You know, I played some digital pedals that sound good. I played some, uh, analog pedals that sound good. Uh, for me, you know, Zach kind of pointing this out is a delay. And so you guys all know that I've been working on this delay. I think I mentioned on this. Uh, oh, we got dueling before. delay releases. Ooh, dual delay. And uh-huh. So, so my delay, the wilderness, it's a, I advertise it as an analog voice because it is a delay pedal is, I mean, it is a digital delay pedal, but it has darker repeats, something that you would find with an analog pedal. But Explain that real quick. Yeah. Darker repeats. Darker repeats. So it being a great band name. So <laughs> darker repeats. Uh, Ooh, well, before I yeah, was kicked out one. of darker repeats. Yeah. Um, no. So the darker. When I say darker repeats, uh, the way delay works is you know, guitar signal comes in, delays the signal, and there's usually a feedback control associated with that. And what it does is it sends that delayed signal back into whatever delayed it, right? And uh, and there's a lot of association with digital pedals having a bright or kind of a, a lot more highs in the feedback. So when, you know, the pedal's delayed, it has a lot more uh, higher frequencies that kind of pop out at you. Whereas a darker delay would have kind of um, those higher frequencies kind of. Could that be lower. classified as decay? Yeah. Uh, in a way, yeah, in a way, because, I mean, if it's, you know, repeating, um a lot of those, I guess. So, I so a digital one is maintaining it at a perfect, exactly uh, at a perfect, uh, perfectness yeah. at every single repeat. 
It's just diminishing repeats where an analog, the signal will actually be not perfect the farther down it goes. Uh, yeah. Check me out. Look, I didn't even, yeah. I, didn't uh, go, I didn't even go to school for none of this. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you know, it's, just, uh, I don't know. It's, I mean, I played analog. Well, you know, since we're talking delays, you know, I played analog delays that sound like crap. You know, they can be too dark to where it just sounds muddy. That's um, probably what I've been playing this whole time. No, that's just your play. Like <laughs> <laughs> just the crappy play. <laughs> well, you know, crap that, goes, was. crap that goes into a delay. <laughs> yeah. Crap yes. in, crap out. Crap in, crap out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume one of the first delay pedals out there that's analog is, what, the Echoplex? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. I just want to bring that yeah. up because they're yeah, really tape, cool. Tape delays. Yeah, tape delay. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, but, you know, as Zach pointed out, there's a lot, um, you have a lot more companies coming out with pedals that are, you know, digital, but they try to emulate the analog, the analog sound. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and even now there's a lot more pedals. Uh, you see this with the Line 6, you see this with the Kempler, all these other effect or all these other processors that can process uh, overdrive, distortion, fuzz, and, you know, to be honest, it sound, you know, a lot of these systems come pretty close to the real thing. Yeah. Um, so, well, let me ask you a real yeah. quick question. Uh, when we're talking about analog delays yeah. versus digital delays, yeah. I have, um, not being a professor of electronics, it seems like there's always this thing brought up about, well, of course we, it's an analog pedal, but we do use the, the, the what's the, the, the chip that's in every like bucket brigade. Oh bucket yeah. Brigade. The bucket brigade chip that was in like the original boss. Uh, uh, anyways, uh, DM2, do, you know, DM3, we, what's yeah. the chip called? Uh, know? it's what the MN, Three zero zero blah blah blah. It's yeah. the one that basically it's is the like, bucket, you're what do Tony it. said. Yeah, bucket the brigade. bucket brigade. Yeah. So, and ex- can just explain bucket bucket group. But gosh, solder, <laughs> Sod, solderless. <laughs> <laughs> Mjolnir. Bucket, explain bucket brigade. So with the uh, Mjolnir. <laughs> so so older. Uh, Oh, did my thing just no. disconnect? Oh, okay. <laughs> what is this cable then? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Okay. Put, that, put that in your mouth. Uh, for all of you guys at home, there. a cable just dropped from my microphone, <laughs> but apparently <laughs> my microphone still works. That's it's, a, a, it's a different one. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as, as mentioned before, there's tape delays. There's also, um, you know, the memory man effect which uses a bucket brigade chip okay uh, now other delays do use the bucket brigade but the bucket brigade the way it works is you have a signal and it's just passed down a series of delays and then you sum up all the delays and you got a really long delay so that's all it is and, and the reason why it's called bucket brigade is because back in the day you know before we had really advanced fire trucks and everything is uh the fireman would, you know, take, imagine having like a line and you fill up the, uh, you fill up a bucket and you pass it down the line. Well, you know, you got some people that shake, you got some people that, you know, sneeze when they're holding the bucket, you know, and by time that full bucket, are they they allergic to buckets? Is that why they sneeze? It could be the, so we get a lot of spillage. (laughs) So you get a lot of spillage. So you start with a full bucket and then by time you get to the end of the line, you end up with, you know, a bucket that may have lost a lot of the water and that can kind of be, uh, brought back to the effect itself. You know, a lot of these, you know, the signal comes in through the bucket brigade and by the time the signal comes out of the bucket brigade, you can lose a lot of frequencies in your guitar signal. Right. And so that's partially why some of these sound either dirty or uh, darker, as right. mentioned before. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, Zach, do you have anything to add to that? Well, yeah, I think, you know, people don't understand the reason why I wanted to do this this podcast and talk about surface and all the, 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 the competing ideas that a lot of people have about pedals in general is, you know, people want huge feature sets. They want all these things and they don't understand the limitations that a lot of these chips have and just like cost of making it work. You know, analog is much what I prefer. I love analog circuits. Um, and, and to be fair, a lot of vintage analog pedals like the Deluxe Memory Man and whatnot were pretty bright. You know, they're not all these echo repeat things, but 
you know, I, I just think that people have to come around to the ideas. And, you know, we've accepted Kempers, we've accepted the Helix, but sometimes, like I said earlier, when when people hear that you're making a delay and it's digital, they're like, oh, I don't like digital delay. They're too bright. You know, like people have to kind of realign their notion of, of what these things are and what they do and how we can manipulate them to sound how we want the sound. Right, right. Exactly. And I think, I th- you know, just to summarize, I think this point and also even a point before, you know, with the hype is just play something that sounds good to you, you know, uh, whether it's digital, whether it's right. analog, if it sounds good, it sounds good. And, uh, and we mentioned a difference between a lot of these pedals in the boutique world is their designs and how that resonates with the consumer. So find a design that fits you, find a design that you think sounds more true to your playing, more true to kind of what you're playing. And I think the, you know, a good analogy Absolutely. would be vinyl records versus CDs or, yep. you know, or digital recordings. It's like night and day. I mean, to the human ear, I think that, you know, the analog sa- sound of, of vinyl is more pleasing, but it does have limitations. And, you know, it, it you know, eventually with a record, it wears out. Yeah. Yep. yeah. All right. So. One of the things that came up again in our conversation, and Mike, we've talked about this before. Tony, we've talked about this before. Jared, we definitely have not talked about this before. <laughs> um, but so I, I hear a lot of noise about, you know, parts. So mm. specifically like mm-hmm. the germanium factor and other things, which is like, hey, some of these things have been, we've been using for a long time, but they're, they're not making them anymore. Things are being depleted. Let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, Zach, you want to take us into that conversation? Sure. Yeah. So uh, we are in finite supply on a lot of through hole components, especially transistors. Um, I think that's the thing that most people in our industry are kind of like, especially in the smaller communities, the do it yourself sort of groups and stuff. Like you can't get a lot of the same transistors anymore because companies aren't making them. And, And then the ones that are making them, they are nowhere near the same spec as the ones that were made previously or made, you know, here in the States or in Japan or whatever. But those sort of components are just kind of disappearing. And even some other things that I've encountered, little ribbon cables, and this is something that seems so unimportant, (laughs) but ribbon cables to connect between the circuit board and the foot switch, Molex, which is probably one of the most well-known companies to make those sort of things, they don't make them anymore. So if you want little six wire ribbon connectors that are two inches, like you have to buy them now because one day they're going to be all gone and you have to get them custom made for you. Wow. Yeah. Mike. So with the components that are being uh, now, I guess turned obsolete, you actually have, there's a couple more companies that are actually coming out and trying to redo a lot of these older chips because one example is the bucket brigade chip that we talked about because back in the day those yep. bucket brigade chips were actually used for you know common commercial electronics and uh since then you know we've adapted smarter technology and so those components aren't used really in any type of commercial electronics but us guitarists same thing with tubes you know your computer your radio is not powered using a tube anymore but we musicians still find an application for that so um as with these tube companies um there's a lot more companies trying to take the old technology and re-manufacture that um, one being, um, you know, Panasonic, they used to do the bucket brigade chips, um, all the different timing chips for the delays that you see in, um, the vintage delays. But, uh, now I think it's cool audio. They're doing, um, they're kind of taking that same exact technology that was used in those, uh, circuits or the integrated chips for the bucket brigade devices. And they're kind of like coming back out with it. So it's kind of a revamped um, chip, but it uses the same kind of, it reacts the same. Right. Um, So I think there's, uh, and I think there's, you know, mind you, uh, it'd definitely be hard, but there's definitely, um, there's definitely a market out there to kind of bring back these vintage 
electronics. Well, whenever we see stuff, uh, I'm, I'm for sure, Zach, I know you know this, that when you see something on, on Instagram and it's like, I just got a big box of germanium transistors from Russia, <laughs> you know, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Everybody freaks uh-huh. out right now. Those of us who don't know about right, yeah. this, that we're like, why, why are you guys all, you know, getting crazy about this? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's actually really helpful to understand why, that yeah, effect. and the, so for those of you unfamiliar with the whole thing, silicone germanium, uh, silicone down to if you follow it up its train, it's actually to sand. That's originally how they, you know, after you go through the whole manufacturing process, you end up with, a, uh, they call it a silicone wafer, and that's what they use to process all these semiconductors like transistors, you know, uh, op amps, all these different devices are use silicone. Mm-hmm. Um, but back in the day, before silicone was kind of the industry sh- standard, uh, they had, they used other chemicals um, and dopants, what they call them. Uh, and one of those being germanium and, um, it's a different way for the component to react, but it has uh, the coolest of all names, germanium, germanium. right? Germanium. I know. And, uh, yes, so all these different chemicals have different, uh, they react differently, um, you know, electronic wise and, uh, but silicone is a lot easier to make. And so, that it's a lot easier to make, has a smaller tolerance, so that's kind of why it's become the industry standard. And as mentioned before, whatever comes the industry standard, if it's not the standard, then it's out the door. Yeah. And that's kind of what's happening with germanium right. transistors. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. Uh, well, there's a, there's a big misconception about um, what what germanium actually is. Yeah. At least I've recognized this in, when I'm doing pedals. Yeah. Uh, like a lot of people say, like the Golden Fleece, for example, they say, oh, is it germanium? Mm-hmm. And they, they don't understand what that means. That's just, that's just a buzzword for a lot of people. And really for pedal builders, we get it. But for a lot of people, it's a super buzzword. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, do those, uh, I, I know you probably try to get a bunch of new old stock kinds of things. Do they degrade over time like most other electronic oh, components? Yeah. yeah. So germanium, um, you know, if you yeah. talk to somebody in the duo, uh, DIY community, they talk about current leakage. They There's all different kind of parameters that change because, I mean, just the same way, you know, you buy an old car, it's going to rust. Same things happen with components is uh, they, you know, they age over time. Um, and yeah. So I don't know if Zach has anything on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I've bought I've bought vintage style components um, that the leads were actually so corroded you couldn't they couldn't really take solder and I'd have to <laughs> to to take some sandpaper and, and sand them so I could actually put them in something because they were just so old. Yeah, and so that I, I'm assuming that you you know as compared to like the silicone counterpart, you probably paid a lot more for those units, right? Right. Yeah, and, and that's something too that you know. People that are trying to bring back this this age of, of analog and, and 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 resurrect the dead components, yeah. as it were, uh, it's coming at quite the cost. Yep. So everything, in OS and in OS style, those those cool audio chips are way more expensive than they used to be, just because you know they kind of have to be now. And that that's part of the argument for analog versus digital too. Like, why would you spend so much more for something that does the same job, uh, arguably worse? than than the newer technology and and not as stable either i know like one of the big things with uh you know a really really great germanium you know fuzz pedal or something is that if you you're playing a super long set and you've got that thing juiced for quite a long time it changes over time it changes the sound and um, right. and then there's also like if it gets too cold so if you're in the northern states and you got your board in the back and then you plug it in you know what's happening there yeah I, I obviously don't know the, the all the wherewithal without that, yeah. but you know, you guys and, probably. And know I think more. that's one good thing for the listeners to know is, um, you know, if they're in the market, they're searching for a fuzz or whatever, and they're wondering, man, what's the difference between this? Why is silicone a lot cheaper than this germanium alternative? That's because the builder has to source these parts out. They end up costing more, and you know, you might buy a hundred germanium transistors and because of their degradation over time, you might be able to only use 40 of them. So uh, that's kind of where that cost comes. Uh, you know, if a musician's looking for 
silicone or germanium transistor. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Speaking of whether things are necessary or not, tap pedals. That seems to be a big one right now, considering both of you put it on the on the list of questions. <laughs> uh, let's let's talk a little bit about tap pedals, uh, Zach. Where were you going right. with that? Well, I think you know Mike sent some conversation points, and I was looking at that, and I was, you know, th- there's like this um, like a checklist that a lot of people have for for things, and a lot of people really want the max amount of feature sets for pedals, but do they really need it? You know, like how. Because how accurate can you be to a BPM with your toe? You know, like if you're really needing to sync up with stuff. So, you know, there, that that's kind of the thing. It's like mm. I understand the point of a lot of super uh, technical and 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 um, feature rich pedals, but you know what what did need versus want? You mm. know that I think that's a thing that a lot of people don't consider when it when it comes to to everything they buy, but pedals especially. And and we can probably open this up to like presets and stuff too, and, yeah. and, and loops and just uh, we actually brought this up on the last uh, uh, the episode, the one of the last episodes where we discussed like the the idea of um, what should your pedal be doing versus what can it possibly do, and which one is is uh, you know more. What what's better to have, or, or you know, it, so that was obviously it's a very subjective subject, but um, well, there and there the, you have to there there has to be a useful range, right? I mean, you can you know with electronics pretty much make it do just about anything, right? But to to, to what make end? It, yeah, to to make it useful and to put it into you know, what's, what's acceptable to the human ear or whatever. Well, and that goes even into, you know, absolutely no knocking these things because they are truly amazing pedals. We've played them. We've had them on the show, but Strymon nine out of 10 people that, right. That share their four on the floor where they mentioned a Strymon, they said, I, I got a couple that I liked and that's kind of where I stopped or, or even the chase bliss stuff, which is like, they are amazing pedals. There is a huge amount of, of, of smarts and technology that go into them. Yep. But at the end of the day, the user is the user's only going, you know, like a foot into the mile of what it can be. Is that the right pedal for you? You know, that's, that's just something to think. And, right. and it could yeah. be the right pedal for you because you really love the brand and you really want to get the, the next one in line so that, you know, because you like that other stuff, which is totally cool. But it's just something that we've noticed speaking to people on the show, especially when it comes to the four on the floors. Right, right. Aside from the, well, how about the presets? That's that's a big one right now. We're seeing a lot of preset pedals uh, yeah. that are not big box stuff. Like Mike, I know you do a lot of stuff with presets. Yeah. So uh, one of my pedals that I have that have presets is the uh, Ghost Ridge Reverb, mm-hmm. and the that's whole, gotten a lot of great reviews. And yeah. I'm not just saying that because I don't own it or anything, but I, legitimately, it's well, got a lot of great reviews. You know, one of the biggest things where that kind of was born from was is I'm a musician. I play live. Uh, you know. And the reverb that I, the reverb pedal that I had was a Nudebear Wet, and uh, love that reverb, sweetest reverb ever. But it, the one that I had was the stereo or mono, one of the one of those. But it had mix and depth, and it just had you know. And I had like my settings would be at both knobs at eleven or either both knobs at one. I had like two settings that I sure. would bounce between the two, and so you know I'd be playing you know live during the set, and then I had to get down twist them, you know, and then I get back to the other part in the song, get bend down, twist them. And I was like, man, this sucks, you know, but I really only need a couple presets because I've, I've tried other companies products that have multiple presets, you know, and as for me, I, you know, I don't need to bounce between preset number zero to 65. I'm not going to do that in one set. And, you know, for me, <laughs> I can only keep track of probably four or less, <laughs> right. you know, cause after that I'm like, wait, what was number 10 or yeah. what was number 26? Uh, but there is a place for that. Um, but as for me, uh, I just don't find a place for it, but I do see presets as a usable, um, it's, you know, for the musician it's usable, mm-hmm. um, because you might have different types of sounds that you implement 
you know, in a song, yeah. um, you know, in a song you might have where you kind of have dry and then you come up on that solo that you need to rip. <laughs> yeah. And then you oh, need I a lot more, day long. you need a lot more, <laughs> <laughs> you need a lot more space. So you need <laughs> to bounce that, you know, bounce to a heavier kind of reverb. And so I think pre, uh, I think presets are, uh, are a good useful tool and uh, it just depends on what's applicable to you. Yeah. And there's a lot of different kinds of those as well. I think people who have been really smart about them. You'd certainly have uh, a way of uh, that you figured out that's worked with it. Yeah. I know, um, know we've had swindler effects. They've got a really uh, great way to do presets. It's oh, yeah. only two presets. And then you have uh, Matthew effects who has their astronomer. And their, yeah. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of great ways and that's the kind of preset can dictate. Well, do I want a pedal or that pedal or not? So exactly. Interesting, exactly. interesting stuff. Right. Okay. What makes a great overdrive? That is a question. That's the question of the ages when it comes to pedals. I think I feel like that. I'm kind of an overdrive guy. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Uh, Mike, I know that you specifically wanted to hear from Zach's standpoint because he does do a lot of overdrive. Yeah, exactly. I just wanted to hear from Zach because he makes phenomenal uh, overdrives. And so I kind of want to just get his perspective on the whole overdrive fuzz distortion market. Yeah, what makes a good, what, what in your mind makes a good one and why? Exactly. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's funny, like my guitar pedal collection, people ask me all the time, like, what kind of cool stuff do you have? And I'm like, I just have overdrives, man. That's like all I got. But I, I think the best thing about any gain pedal be that a clean boost, be that an overdrive distortion, or even a fuzz is that, well, maybe not necessarily a fuzz, but overdrives and distortion, especially they don't need to take anything away and they don't need to get in the way of your guitar experience. They need to, to take you up and give you more of something, be that a different tonal shift or just a little bit more of an inspired tone or more compression and sustain. But I think the thing that makes an overdrive pedal great is that it only adds to your guitar and your amp and your tone and it never takes anything away. And that's kind of how I've approached everything I, I, I make. Solid. Yeah, that's good. Um, so Zach, when you, so when you're working on like the overdrives, uh, you know, cause you talk about like taking away, not taking away the character and, um, do you try these when you design these, do you play these through like, you know, like a Les Paul type of guitar, you know, Strat type of guitar? Like, are you playing through these through right. multiple guitars? Well, yeah. Like, so I, I, whenever I design anything, I, I play it with all my guitars, which are mostly humbuckers and P90 load, a lot of brand wound P90s in there. Hey, nice. Uh, those are good. But, <laughs> but whenever I, I get done designing something or, or I have, have a really solid prototype, I've, I'll try it with my setups. I have Les Pauls. I have some, uh, I have a Revolta guitar, a Tele, and I'll play it with a, a British style lamp and a, a American style lamp. And then I take it to stores uh, like dealers around town and I'll play it with strats, with tellies, with, you know, whatever into Vox, into, you know, Hot Rod DeVille, yeah. Blues Junior, everything, because I don't think you should ever get a pedal and put it in front of your rig and be so utterly disappointed. And I think that, I mean, that very well can happen, but, but yeah, I, I try to make it as um, universal as possible. And that, you know, sometimes it's not easy. Okay. That's actually, you bring up a really good point. I was going to ask both Jared and Tony what their thoughts are on what makes a good overdrive to them. I know that we were actually just talking about a particular overdrive that, uh, Jared, you'd put in front of your Marshall and you said you couldn't, you hated it. And we we're all like, what? <laughs> so talk from your perspective, Jared, talk about overdrive a little bit here. Well, I think it depends. It, I think it, number one, it does depend what amp you're using it in front of. That matters unbelievably a lot. Uh, the pedal, yeah, that I that I tested out, of course, it just didn't sound good through the amp I, I put it through. I also have a, a Mutron, um, Mutron, whichever you prefer, <laughs> and it's got it's got uh, it's the it's got the squeezer and the the uh, the compression the the overdrive on that. That sounds like garbage through my Marshall, but it sounds awesome 
through my twin reverb. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Marshall, just, Marshalls don't like to be front loaded. No, I don't think they do. Um, so I, I don't really have a preference on, you know, what's my absolute favorite overdrive of all time. It just has to sound good with the rig I'm using. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, I in, in, in my opinion, I mean, right. I, I like something that doesn't color the sound so much that it, you don't recognize it, yeah. but it makes, I mean, the ultimate sound to me, it's, it, it's an improvement over what the amp can produce by itself. And whether that's a little more bottom end, a little more high end, some you know, it's it, there's a certain something that you can hear mm -hmm. that I think uh, really defines what a really good overdrive pedal sounds like. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think we're we would all unanimously yeah. agree with that. And then the magic starts happening when you stack, because mm -hmm. then you start can getting you know everything's going to have some tonal quality to it, whether it's perceivable or not. And when you get, when you start to stack, then those things can actually compound each other and you can go like, whoa, dude, that gonna, actually yeah. sounds kind of harmonic. I dig it. I'm going to go against you, man. I don't, I'm not a snacker. Stacker. No, no, not a snacker. No. <laughs> Only when it comes to pancakes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, but I, 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 I'm not a stacker. Like I, uh, I like to, uh, you know, in a sense, let the overdrive kind of do its thing because I feel like when you, not, not that. You know, it doesn't sound bad, but I like to kind of let the pedal shine for itself I get and it. let it, yeah. let, you know, let it do its own thing. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Yeah, mm. Zach, what about you? Stacking. Well, I I uh, usually have my amp at the cusp of breaking up, you know, and so that's kind of where my amp lives. And then I use all my my gain pedals relatively low gain, just run them loud, and then I do usually stack them. I'll have like, you know, my bass guitar tone my pedals and or like my my boost pedal and then my overdrive pedal but i'm writing my, my guitar volume constantly mm, like interesting I, I i that's how i play guitar and i think i think that's you know how guys that play like me who are like honestly when i play guitar i'm i don't even plug in pedals i just plug into my amp and like when you're used to using your guitar volume you just want things to just give you more and more in smaller increment you know mm -hmm. yeah interesting yeah. So one final note about like stacking, I, and this is, uh, I don't necessarily do like overdrive and overdrive, but what I like to do is have, have my overdrive or a preamp or something and stack. I like stacking things that drive, but not necessarily to do the same thing. And what I find that, that comes out of that is if I just have the pedal itself and it does that, well, I can, it, it, it is limited by what only that pedal can do. But when I put it together with something else and, and blend it, then it gets something that was never intended or thought of right. and actually pretty unique. And I will say coming out of a lot of the shows, I get asked about the tone that I have often because it's, I don't know if it's bad. It might be just because it's bad, but it's, <laughs> it's got a, it's got this kind of quality to it that I can't, I couldn't duplicate if I tried, but if I put these two pedals together, blammo, I get it. So anyways, that's something to, to consider when we're talking about stacking drives. It doesn't have to be stacking overdrives, but play around and see, see what other things do. I mean, heck you could even take, uh, you know, some of these other new ones that like the, the, uh, delays and, and reverbs that are, that are actually putting in dirt into those and, and use that as a stack instead of just a modulation. Yeah. That could be really cool too. Yeah. But my new uh, delay is going to have like a preamp in it. So you can actually drive your amp pretty hard with it, which is pretty cool. I'm excited. Oh, that's nice. Awesome. Nice. Well, speaking of your pedals, uh, well, this thing whole all started with these two funny little men uh, that are the golden fleece twins here. And your question to us was you sent these out and you said, play these I want you guys all to play them and tell us if you feel like there is a difference. So we're going to report on that for you real quick, okay? We did not crack these open. Um, there is sure. one pedal with a clear knob and one pedal with a with the sort of Bakelite style brown knob. They're both uh, the, I don't know, what would you call this? this is, that's kind of like the Klon kind of knob, right? Yeah, I think they call them. You guys them like know the actual chicken. Yeah, yeah. What do they call them? Chicken something? Mm, no, yeah, that's like Davies 1400, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. anyways. Or All right. Oh wait, those yeah. Tony. Yes. 
report. All right, so here are my observations, although there's not, in my opinion, a lot of difference between the two, uh, but some of the things that I noticed, the one with the clear knob uh, seemed to be a little bit brighter, and it, it, the way I tested them is, is, as I do with a lot of pedals, is I, I want to see, see what level unity gain is. So in other words, the sound with the pedal on or off should be about it, the same level. The volume level. level should be about the same. And I noticed that uh, the clear knob uh, one it had a little bit lower unity gain, so I'm thinking that's maybe a little more efficient uh, don't circuitry. Guess yet. Don't guess. I'm not guessing. Okay. Um, the red <laughs> knob one or brown knob one, whatever you want to call it there. Blood red. Uh, the blood red one. Wine red. Um, I think uh, that one, uh, just ever so slightly, it had to be a little bit higher at the unity gain. But the, the one thing I noticed, it seemed to be a little bit darker uh, as you boosted the levels up, which... Um, mm. I think I know my I know, I know my guess. Okay, don't say your guess. I'm not going to guess. Zach that. will reveal all at the end, <laughs> uh, and then Mike didn't have a chance to That's play right. these. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity because uh, he lives in Dayton. Yeah, uh, but uh, ah. Jared, I I think you you echoed a, a similar uh, experience with these, right? Absolutely. Um, because you were saying how, especially with the brightness, that was that was the one thing that you called out um, when we were for, when we were talking about these. Yeah. They are bright yellow. Yeah. Well, I mean, they are bright no. yellow. <laughs> yeah. No, that's the way they sound. Yeah. Uh, as, as for me, I echo that, that it was just, you know, I, it's, it's subtle. I mean, it's and we're subtle. talking just, yeah. you know. It's subtle. However, what I got out of this was the, the clear knob had a, a, a almost, I don't know if it was a brightness or just a, like a, a, a little bit more clarity on the higher end of things, which could be considered brightness. Some would call that, <laughs> but maybe not. But I think I think it's a slightly different quality. And uh, one way to beat around the bush. Hey, clarity hey, on the you, treble who levels. Wanna, who do you want to write your descriptions, everybody? <laughs> yeah, <that's pretty laughs> Anyways, uh, and then the right. the other one, which is the 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 Bakelite style knob, I found had a just a slight bit more like. I don't know if it was like uh, like a harmonic woolly feel to it. It just had a yeah, little woolly, like a yeah. je ne sais quoi. It's it's like a little right? woolly. A certain je ne sais quoi. Yeah, it yeah. had a certain je ne sais quoi. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> that being said, okay, if I was going to choose one of these, yes, I probably would have gone with the brown knob. I, I agree. The I wine agree. red. Um, but depending on what amp you're, I only okay. played it through. I only played it through my Supra, which is bright. Yes. Yeah. So uh, if you're playing it through something else, maybe that's not the, the case. And Tony, you you played it through your Vox. Vox AC15. Did you do yeah. it through your Dr. Z? I did not do it through the Z, no. Okay. And Jared, you ran it through? I ran it through my uh, Fender Twin. Okay. All Ooh. right. So that's three brights. Yeah, those are so all bright. So maybe that's, bright. Maybe that's something weighing in. So, all right. So Zach, what are you doing here? What's going on? Well, I, I kind of like you guys to guess uh, which one is the through hole and which one is the surface mount. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and it guess. sounds like it would all be. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that the that the brown bakelite knob is the, the through. through hole. Yes, yeah. I agree. Is that unanimous? Yes. Yeah. You're all wrong. Ah! Ah! I knew it. I knew you. Did you, you? You you probably put an extra thing in there to make it sound like a through hole to throw no. it off. No, you're I, kidding me. I even made sure. No, I even made sure. I measured the diodes so they would have the same forward voltage. Mm -hmm. uh, I used the same types of caps. I did everything. I I even modded the through hole one so that the power filtering was the same as the surface mount, which because it was slightly different. So. Yeah, I, I, I knew it sounded better, and now I feel a lot better about my decision to make. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it is it is subtle, and I and I can I can definitely say that like if I had either one of these on my board, I would be a happy man. Um, it, but when you're sitting there and you're trying to scrutinize something, 
and you're gonna try it on the neck pickup and the bridge pickup. Right. And it's like yeah. it's kind of like smelling perfumes. At some point, you're like, I think I like this one better. But w- w- unanimously, we all did pick something <laughs> else a l- uh, up the, just yeah. a little bit. So yeah, right. that was really fun. I really enjoyed doing that. That was that's really, awesome. That was cool. So thank you so much for uh, allowing us to do that, ladies and gentlemen. The last thing we just want to find out is. From these two gentlemen, these two esteemed pedal builders and the pedal world of, of pedalness, what does the future <laughs> hold, gentlemen? Mike, let's have you start and we'll have Zach wrap up. Um, I think, you know, as as things are getting easier to program, as th- you, there's a lot more gates into kind of the digital world, I think you're going to s- start seeing that from the builders. I mean, we already got a lot of other people doing you know multiple like reverse delays uh the granular delays all kinds of uh crazy sounds so i think as the industry evolves i think you're going to start seeing more complex sounds coming out of guitar pedals and uh there's always going to be a market for that overdrive distortion fuzz you know there's always going to be that but i think you're going to start seeing a lot of these uh builders kind of diving into the more complex sounds even more than just reverb and delay itself um you're gonna start seeing some crazy kind of stuff come and it's pretty exciting cool zach i think that um we're gonna see the boutique market kind of shift in a way this is something you know i thought we could talk about but you know the time the the industry is kind of going hard left and right in a lot of ways where some are embracing technology and moving to where they can do the, the complex things and, and albeit for delays or whatever, even overdrives having a bunch of features and, and a lot of options. And then a lot of people are, are creating, you know, the purest boutique hand wired through hole sort of stuff. And I think those sort of things, the boutique hand wired, like really high end things are going to still be there. I think we're going to see the prices go up, but I think, I think Mike's right. We're going to start seeing a lot more things that can do a whole lot more things. And another thing that I've noticed, and I think this trend's going to continue, we've seen it in guitars, we've seen it in amps, but I think the budget-friendly things are going to keep getting better. And us boutique guys are going to have to work harder to compete with the, uh, you know, the mm. people who are making pedals that are 50 you know, $75. That, that's an interesting thing because from a consumer standpoint and a pedal enthusiast and just a mu- and being a musician, I, I, I don't think personally that you guys will ever have to compete with that. And I could be, I could be so far off the mark. It's ridiculous. And people are laughing at me right now, but they're just, I right. see them as two different things. I'm, I, I, you know, yes, it ultimately does come down into the sound and everything, but just for the same reason that it, there isn't one answer to that. It's not, it can't, it doesn't have to be just to the left or to the right. We need both and there's room for both and there's, there's need for both. And even to the point of when you were talking about, there's always going to be an overdrive or something. Yeah. I just got another overdrive sent uh, that I was thrilled about, right? And it doesn't mean that because I already have some overdrives that I can't get excited about a new one. There's always going to be little nuances to play on. And even if there's no nuances at all, it's from a brand that I like or they did something cool with the graphics. It's a collectible at that point. So I think from a build standpoint and and um, unique things that are coming forward, that will be exciting to see. Um, And please, everybody who is out there listening and building, just because there are literally 8,294 overdrives, keep making them. We'll still, we still want them. (laughs) Yep. If it sounds good, I'll buy it. You just bought one based on that. Yeah. At the show. Yep. So uh, awesome. This has been a ton of fun, guys. I really appreciate you spending time sharing your insights from um, a different perspective that Tony and Jared and I don't necessarily have uh, from the builder. But um, uh, hopefully everybody out there dug it and um, let us know what you think. All right. Big Jared. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for another episode of... Would you rather tonight's would you rather it's going to be a a tidbit related to what we've been talking about the last subject, actually Uh, second to the last. So (laughs) 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 you want to have a pedal built uh, by either Mr. Zach Broyles or our friend Mikey here. 
And Zach's also our friend. Yeah, of course. He's qualifying. Yeah. It's his third time on. He's yeah. one of the guys. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, you want to have a, an awesome pedal built <laughs> and you you don't know what to do. And you're like, well, should I should I do the surface or should I do the through hole? You know, I don't know what to do. So <laughs> mm-hmm. would you rather surface or through hole board when you order your pedal? What are you going to do? All right, so we have to pick one. You have to pick one or the other. And we're assuming that one either Mike the, the or manufacturer Zach or surface matter. or through hole. Yeah, well, the, yeah. you, you, it, we're just saying, <laughs> we're using them as an example. <laughs> right. But let's also assume that the manufacturer of this pedal, uh, either either Zach or, or, or Mike, or actually they're, maybe they're collaborating on a pedal. Yeah. Ah. Let's say it's a pedal collaboration. They're there not go. going to Perfect. say, I would suggest doing this. They're not going to say that. You have to decide. We have to decide. That's right. Okay. All right, I got it. Uh, Mike, assuming that you were, well, just what would you do? What would you do? <laughs> no, no, that's not that like we oh, should. Oh, they don't get to answer? No. Oh, well, or, well, I guess yeah, they, that's yeah, right. yeah, they do. Well, yeah, they let's do. let yeah. them go last. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Tony. Well, up until we <laughs> revealed which of the pedals was uh, a surface versus through hole, I would have said, uh, you know, the through hole would have been the way to go. But um, based on this pedal comparison here, I think uh, I'm okay with surface mount. So I'm going that direction. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go to the same way because the pedal I want built is very complex. And I know they won't have a problem with doing it on the surface mount. I know it'll sound awesome. So I'm definitely going with surface. All right. I'm going to go through hole simply because I, if I'm requesting this directly from them and they're going to make one mm. of it for me, then I, I want their, I want their grubby <laughs> hands all over. This That's thing. a good point. Um, Mike. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I think you really hit it is, am I making one or am I making multiple of these? Uh, cause I think that will make a difference. And also what Jared hit on, is it going to be complex or is it going to be simple? Yeah. You know, if I'm making multiple, multiple of these and it's going to be complex, I'm going to use smaller components so I can slam more onto this board. If I'm making one off, you know, overdrive fuzz, uh, you know, I'm going to, and I don't, I don't have a problem with through hole. Uh, but majority I would use service mount only because that's kind of what I'm, u- I've been using in my designs. Okay. I found a flaw with it. Solid. Zach. You know, if I was going to have someone make a pedal for me, uh, even even if they could do it well with surface mount, I would probably prefer through hole. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then let's not forget our pal Lollygagger, who's still doing the turrets. 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 <laughs> Which oh, are awesome. And, you know, that's a whole that's so other exhausting. discussion. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> There's not a whole lot of people doing that. So, I mean, that alone makes you go like, yeah. well, that's a thing. You should have that pedal simply because... The work they're put into it. Yeah, the work put into it. And a wooden it, case. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Um that wasn't necessarily a plug just for, for Sean or anything, but uh but it uh, it's it's a fact. <laughs> well, fact. I mean, yeah. you know, there's a couple people doing it that way. Yep. And yeah. and I, so I just want to call attention to we're not totally forgetting the turret fellas. You know, and and that's I think when um, you do open a back of one of those and you see a turret board, you're like, Whoa. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Anyway, so thank you for continuing to do that, uh turret boys. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what how else to qualify that. Turret boys. Tony Tony, we got some some peoples. Oh, I know what you want me to do. Yes. At this part of the show, we like to thank a special, special, special group of people. Who? Uh, we call them our executive producers. Ah. Now they uh have they've gone over to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs and they saw the various levels that they could participate as patrons of this phenomenal podcast called known as the guitar knobs. And they decided they wanted to do the Cadillac, the Cadillac group. They get all these wonderful things like barefoot buttons and t-shirts and um, no man, just stickers, stickers, and, stickers picks and, and picks and, and all kinds of stuff. And, and the satisfaction of knowing that they are supporting a podcast, a show, if you will. Yes. That they dearly love. And at this point, we'll have known that there was a giveaway and that there's probably going to be more <gasps> giveaways in the future. So that's one of the best ways to get that. I love it. So um, 
there's one other thing uh, that the executive producers get. Mike, what happens? No. They get to have their name right on the thing. <laughs> Whoa, what? <laughs> yes. Are you right. kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I uh, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, Jared would not relinquish that. No, no that's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> we all know it. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Yeah. So let's uh, uh, let's just uh, you know, this is a large group of people, and we really appreciate it. Even if we don't read your name, we appreciate you. Let's start with Doug Gann, Tim Nowak, John Esterly, Chris Heidel, Ty Harmon, Tyler Bray, John Anglin, Anthony Lanthrop. Johnny Knowles, Stefan Lam, Rick Lenglou, uh, Michael McVeigh, and the other Michael we like, Michael Senchuk, hey. Brian Robison, Jonathan Jerusik, Ken Sayers, Corey Nigro, Brad Partridge, Michael Van Zant, Doug Christ, Darren Gregory, Chris Kearney, Sean S. 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 John Daly, Martin Cliff, and Tom Brazen. All right, you guys, thank you so much for your support. Uh, it means the world to us, and we encourage you, if you are thinking about it, just jump right into the Patreon group. You will not regret it. And uh, again, we will hope we be having more giveaways and stuff for the Patreon members, um, as well as you know general population as well. So we're not going to just exclude everybody else. Uh, but that being said... Uh, Zach, where can people find you? You can find me at mythospedals.com or on Instagram at, at mythospedals. Awesome. Mike? Uh, Instagram at native audio. And uh, yeah. Super. Tony? Go over to pickguardian.com. If you want to see some of the things, the projects that I've been working on, go over to Instagram and pick guardian and the number one. Perfect. Jared? Brandonwallpickups.com. Excellent. Wow. The brevity. I love it. Uh, you can shoot me a note, uh, an email, Todd at the guitar knobs.com. You can also direct message me on Instagram at guitar knobs on Instagram. And man, oh man, we're so grateful to Zach and especially Zach for coming, for thinking the, uh, of the idea here Yeah, and for Mike for uh, hanging out with us. Everybody out there have a fantastic guitar week. Zach, We'll see you at some point, right? Yes. Maybe next time I'll just fly up there. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Everybody else, subscribe! Yeah. What the hell? Hold on. Let me get my cat out of here. She's like bumping <laughs> the, the desk. No. <laughs> 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 You know the one that um, the one that I use the. Um, That's just because I moisturize. Dang, I always forget this damn name of this pedal. Well, hold on, I, I, I can't edit that. That's crazy okay. pants. The get the the, the, the <laughs> yeah the what the the. the uh, Don't put Mike on the that spot. That was perfect. Yeah. Son of a. This is a highly complex episode, you guys. Beasting. <laughs> we can go back to oh. the future. <laughs> It's the champion lucky pedal. It's, it's the one we both have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, not it's not you. the fat get either. <laughs> either. It's, not, it's, not, it's, it's not the, the uh, divvy. Hang on. I love that pedal. Yeah. Or would you rather use a top load board? That's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so the pedal <fettle> boost. <laughs> I'm jumping in, as if none of this ever happened. Well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Visit our website at theguitarknobs.com for all of our past episodes, four on the floor blog, and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also, be sure to check out our Instagram at guitar knobs. Catch you next time.